It is 119 days till the man burns and today we're talking about what to carry around in your day bag. Because I feel like for first timers, you end up carrying around so much stuff the first couple of days and by day three or four you realise like you do not need to carry all of that stuff with you. You will survive without that super heavy backpack that's just making your back sweat. So obviously you will need to carry around water, hopefully you have a camelback, but if not, you can get away with just, you know, a backpack and some like litre or two litre plastic bottles. If you're bringing your water in something else and then just pouring them into the smaller bottles, make sure you bring some extra just in case any of them split or break because then you're gonna struggle to carry around water if you don't have something to put it in. Adventures at Burning Man can tend to go on a little longer than you expect, so like small bottles are not gonna cut it unless you obviously bring multiples, but having a couple of liters of water on you is probably a good idea. Unless you know for absolute sure you are only popping out for a very short little adventure and then coming back. Even then, I'd probably still take extra. There's so many things to distract you that you may intend it to be a short trip and yeah, it lasts a lot longer. Chapstick and sun cream are two things that I would not go out without. You will want to be topping up your sun cream a lot. You will get dry cracked lips most likely, so you will want something to relieve them and keep them from falling off of your face. And you won't want to forget your cup because, you know, you're probably gonna end up going past camps that are offering out free drinks and things, and if you want some, you will need your cup. A lot of people swear by having a small notebook and a pen with them, because sometimes you'll meet people and you want to exchange details, maybe you want to meet up later on and they've told you where their camp is, but you know you're gonna forget it. Or maybe they tell you about a really cool thing that's going on on a different day or later on and you just want to note it down to be sure that you do not forget that that thing is happening. Just go for like a really small one. You don't need to like drag around a huge notebook. You know, just, just a tiny one that fits in a pocket. You want a little toilet kit with you because, you know, even though the port have like toilet paper and hand sanitizer, they quite frequently run out of them. So you probably want to make sure you have some of that on your person for if you need to go to the loo and some baby wipes if you like to use baby wipes to maybe clean the seat a bit, and a Ziploc bag for those baby wipes to go in or any moop that you find to go in. You might want a few little snacks as well because like I said, adventures can sometimes go on a lot longer than you expect them to. And so it's nice to have something to nibble on if you get a bit hungry because a lot of the time you're probably out and having fun and you don't want to have to go all the way back to your camp just because you're hungry. Breakfast bars and dried fruit are great for that. You want a dust mask and some goggles with you because you probably will encounter a dust storm at some point and want them. And some sunglasses, although those are normally like on your face or your head and not in your bag, but you know, obviously it is very sunny, so you will probably want sunglasses and a hat. It's nice to have like a nice wide brimmed hat while you're there to just shade your face a bit. Because if you're like me and you burn within seconds, you will probably end up with the panda marks on your face and that's gonna last the rest of the week. Having some plasters or bandages with you is really handy because if you get a small cut, it can be really annoying. Like everything you try and do, you just like keep catching it. It's getting all full of dust and disgusting. If you've got some plasters and baby wipes or hand sanitizer, you can just kind of clean it up a bit and stick a plaster on it. So you're not just like grinding dirt into that fresh open wound. It's also great if you get like hangnails or something so you can just wrap them up because you know they end up like catching on everything and they're so painful. If you're going nude then you will want to bring something to sit on as well. It's, it's nude etiquette to not rub your butt on other camps things. So make sure you've got a scarf or a towel or something for that if you're going nude. It is a good idea to carry around some lights with you so that if you do end up staying out longer than you expected and it starts to get dark, you're not being a dark wad. You have at least something that you can chuck on that's just gonna light you up a bit. The biggest thing is you want to keep it very light. You don't wanna be dragging this super heavy bag around with you and your back sweating and your shoulders are hurting and it's just a pain. And you will learn in the first couple of days things that you can just leave behind and other things that maybe you'll want in your pack because you really miss them when you're out. You really like having chewing gum in your pack. And keep an eye on the quantity of things you're taking out as well. You don't need to take out 10 litres of water with you and 17 cereal bars to make it through the day. You probably just need a couple of cereal bars and a couple of litres of water. So that's it guys, I hope this was helpful. If any of you have any items that you just think are must-haves in your day pack, then let us know in the comment section below. 
And as always, if you see me at Burning Man this year, feel free to come and say hi. Bye, guys. <laughs>